I um, good afternoon everybody I'm Lingo and yeah I'm gonna be posting a TikTok topic. so right here in front we have the people that are gonna be entertaining us tonight uh, my mic is off thank you yeah and gentlemen so we have okay, I'm gonna ask them to introduce themselves and they should tell us uh, what to expect tonight and tomorrow we'll start with ninth wonder Ninth wonder, everybody. How's everybody doing? Um, just uh, try to be a repeat performance of last time I was here. Um, just hip hop, period. Just a good time. You know, sometimes uh, concerts can turn into church almost, you know? Because <laughs> um, people come, you don't know what kind of problems they had during the week. You don't know what they've been through. Sometimes people just want to let go. Sometimes people has heard the radio all week and just tired of it, you know? So all of those problems, you take those kind of problems to church. So sometimes, you know, concerts can be that way. So hopefully, you know, we can just do what we did last time. Because last time was church last time. <laughs> so hopefully we can uh, just, everybody just have a good time, and, you know? I am a Rhapsody Jammer Records representative. <laughs> I think Knife summed up what tonight will be. <laughs> Pretty, you know, just just having a good time. You know, just family all in the building and good music. You know, just having fun. Listen, Tab is the name. Um, for me, tonight is just about having fun, man, and showing our guests how we party, <laughs> how we party here, and yeah, man, just just represent, just bring it and, and have a good time. That's, that's all you should expect, just vibe. <clears throat> uh, my name's Sundown from Actual Proof. Uh, tonight is gonna be a lot of fun. It's not gonna be a show, it's just gonna be fun. Everybody, it's not gonna be us performing for you. It's gonna be all of us just rocking out together. And Enigma of Actual Proof and one <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> that w do that again. Can you please do? No. It's it's. Well, <laughs> now, now I'm smiling. I can't. Nah, that's what my partner said, man. We're just gonna make a connection with everybody out here. We're gonna rock together, and we're gonna party together, and that's what it is, man. Ninth one on the board for us. That's what it's gonna be. <laughs> 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 got me off. Afternoon, everybody. Um, I just want to ask you guys as artists, where do you draw the line and how do you make that choice with regards to being radio friendly but still being true to yourself? Because like Ms. Ntabi spoke earlier, um, she wants to be out there. But at what cost to your own personal sound or personal style? It's great. I was just having this um, conversation um, when I, I just came from Germany not too long ago. And I finally made the, the it came real to me that I understand that hip hop culture is way bigger than uh, a box with knobs on it. Uh, hip hop culture is way bigger than TV and the radio. So if you put that in mind that radio is not your first priority, if you want to reach it from a worldwide standpoint, because before radio and TV decided that we were even worthy of being played, hip hop was around for almost 10 years. So with the, this mass, invasion of the internet with music. I think that, you know, people are realizing and understanding that the term commercial is turning into something else. You know, um, a, a friend of mine by the name of Mac Miller never had a radio hit. It was in Forbes magazine. So I think if you just change your way of thinking thinking the radio is the final frontier of making it, which we all know most majority of people, the radio stations are the last people to hear what's really going on, <laughs> then, you know, 
your level or your understanding or your definition of commercial status will be different. And that's what it is. So that's how I maintain to stay true. Because, you know, if, if I can come to Johannesburg and they know my music, fuck the radio. Yeah. You know what I mean? um, my question is, how, when you get into the studio, when you get into the booth, what is it, you know, what is it that keeps uh, that you that you do to keep the inspiration going, you know, when you came to South Africa, that when you came to South Africa, the last time you rocked, you know, a baseline. And what is what is it in your music? What is it um, that keeps you motivated to um, to make people go crazy like that? Um, so the inspiration, really, and to keep your team motivated because they feel like dope. <laughs> yeah. I was. Um whether it happened the way it was, well, you know, however it was supposed to happen, I was privileged to be a fan of hip hop for 26 years before I became an actual part of it. So I've only been a part of hip hop as far as from artist standpoint for about 11 years now. So 26 outweighs 11, right? So, so I never lost the actual being an actual fan of it. You know, as long as you don't lose being a fan of the, of the music, then that's what keeps you inspired. Like, and I know cats that got into it when they were 14, and now they're like in their 30s and they hate it, you know? And I think also what helps us is the fact that we live in North Carolina. What people don't understand about the States is there's only four places in the States that has big markets for entertainment. New York, well five, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, Atlanta, um, you know, it's one more spot, maybe. Um, yeah, Florida, now Florida. North Carolina is not one of those places. So I, we kind of keep, Enigma said last night, we kind of keep ourselves in a box away from it. And if you keep yourself in that box away from just the nastiness of the industry and things like that, that keeps you inspired too. So that's some of the things that kept me inspired. In terms of Female MCs, I'm sorry, I'm talking, my bad. But female <laughs> MCs, right? Um, lyrical MCs coming up from a female perspective aren't being like recognized. Back in the day, you had your ladies of rages and everybody, you know, you've got your Ty Phoenixes and Jean Greys, but they're from like the previous generation. Do you feel now that you've kind of got like this, 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 this pressure, like you've got to like, you know, push the torch you you know like how are you handling all of that um no, I don't feel any pressure at all you know it's it's just it fits with the time of music you got Kendrick Lamar's and Big Crits and Absols and Joey Badasses you know it's just the time of the music where lyrics are, are back you know people care about lyrics now it's not all about what my dance is so it just kind of fits with the time you know um like I said, like I, I never look at myself as a female first. I'm an artist first. So, you know, just like the guys, I just want to be the best artist I can be. Um, so, you know, the only pressure, and no, I don't have any pressure, just keep making good music and growing as an artist. So that's, that's always been my main focus. I just always felt like I had, <clears throat> I think I think the problem, you know, is, well, I don't think it's a problem, but when artists get into this game, we try to place responsibility on people that really don't need to have that damn responsibility, right? Like we say, well, why don't this person take more responsibility in their actions? Or why don't this person take more responsibility? Well, if, you, if they took more responsibility, then they end up kind of teaching your kid, you know what I mean? And then some artists, I don't want teaching my damn kid. You know what I'm saying? But for me, I thought it was a, it was it's a responsibility. It goes back to me being a fan of it. It was it's a responsibility for me to carry a torch, right? So many private conversations I've had with Pete Rock, and so many private conversations I had with DJ Premier. Not on some, you know, I like your music. Also, but more on some, okay, now do the right thing, bro. Like. Do the right thing because you are carrying a torch for us. And so when you understand 
that responsibility, then, you know, that's, that's how I kind of look at where I am right now in the scope of the history of music or whatever. I just know I got a responsibility. And with that responsibility comes a certain approach to the music, the type of music that I make. And I make the music that I love. That's the thing about it, too. So um, that's how I look at it, really. All righty. Uh, thank you very much, guys. And thank you to you guys as well. Uh, looking forward to tonight. And hope you guys have a good time tonight. Thank you. This is the thing, I mean, because because I've got the platform, this is what happens. A lot of people come up to me and they say, like, yo, dog, I didn't know. Yeah. And I'm saying, I'm sure you guys.